Okay, thank you. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me. Sounds okay. Well, I'm going to talk about GeoGate. I don't know if you have heard of the, of the project. What I'm going to, to do is first introduce the project itself, talk a little bit about GeoGate, and then talk about how GeoGate interacts with OpenStreetMap data. So I will just show you how there are some special commands in GeoGate that allows us to work with OpenStreetMap data, and how maybe we can integrate the whole uh, application, the whole GeoGate, into the OpenStreetMap community. So just showing you some, some, some ideas. Okay. It's not so well. So the keyboard's not working. So, well, I don't know if you're familiar with Git. It's a software for versioning source code. It's uh, pretty popular, and some people actually have started trying to use it to version some other things different than, than source code. What we are doing is just taking the same idea, which is distributed versioning, and try to set that idea for just special data, right? And we are not basing our software on, on Git itself, but we take the philosophy and the same the same uh, influence. Oh, the keyboard is not working. So, well, that's basically the definition of, of Git that comes from the Git manual. So, basically, what you have in this distributed version model is that you have a full copy of the whole repository. So, with all the, the history, you have several copies, and then these copies interact uh, among them, right? So, well, this is the place where we keep it. And the idea is that uh, we're trying to uh, keep our data distributed, so this is actually the future because it gives you, you don't have a single point of, of failure, you have uh, all the copies distributed, and it's much better. Actually, this way of, uh, of versioning uh, source code is one of the most important things that have happened in the last years for, for actually for software development, so we try to move the same ideas to, uh, to the geospatial data. This is the, a quick image of how, how it works, you have your data, you can have it in any, any format that you want. You can have your spatial database, you can have shape files, whatever. You can have uh, OpenStreetMap data in your OpenStreetMap data format. And then you put it into the repository, and this is the first uh, section where you put it as the working tree, and then is where the versioning starts, right? That allows GeoGate to compare your data, see what has changed, etc. And then if you're familiar with the Git uh, workflow, what you do is actually move uh, until you get to the repository database, which is where you create new snapshots. And that way, you just put your data, you see what has changed, well, the software, GeoGet sees what has changed, and then it moves that up to create a new, a new version, right? And then when you create your versions in your repo, and you have your history, then you can move it to other repos, and then you share your data, right? And that's where you would go to a remote repository. You have all the history in your computer, there's a full history in another computer, and you just share your changes with other computers, right? That's how this distributed model actually actually works. One of the things that you can do uh, with GeoGit, which is something that you can do with Git, is do branches. This, in the context of OpenStreetMap, you have your history, but there are no branches. It's a linear history, right? But you can create branches in GeoGit. That means that you don't have just a linear history that you actually advance from one snapshot to the next one, but you can diverge and you can create like a an alternative version of your data, edit it on that branch, and then you can just merge it back, right? I will talk a little bit more about, about this. So well, basically what we do is have some similar commands to what you have in, in Git, right? GeoGit is a command line tool, although we have a, a graphical interface that we'll show later, right? And what you do is just operate with these commands on the command line, and it works similar to Git. Like, for instance, what you see there, I'm comparing uh, the actual data that I have in my working tree with the latest version to see what is new in my, in my data, what, have, what I have done in the last edit. So I just call the diff command and it tells me what has changed for that feature called parks 22. So that's feature 22 in the, in a layer called parks. You see that the geometry has changed. There's one new point added and then I've changed that attribute from garden to park, etc. So that's basically how it works. It's similar to, to Git, but of course adapted to the kind of data that we have. The difference in here, it's a difference that takes into account that what we are versioning is actually a, a feature, right? A geo feature. Well, you see the, the, the commands that we have are very similar if you're familiar with, with Git. So all the commands that you use to, to um, manage the repo, to just create new versions, to share that with other, with other repos, etc. I'm not going to stop a lot into this, right? But you see this basically like that. 
Branches are one of the interesting things about, about Git when compared to other versioning systems for, for source code. And we really like that and we think it's very useful in the context of geodata. Uh, we have to think that uh, we're here in the OpenStreetMap conference, but uh, GeoGit is meant to be used with other types of data. And in some other contexts, it's good to have this what if scenarios. You have your data and you say like, I'm going to make a change to my data, but you don't want to actually change the, the, the main history that you have. So you create a new branch and then you start experimenting and you can do your analysis with that modified version. And then when you get to the one that you want, you can merge it back, right? So in Git, it's very cheap to create branches. It's cheap and it's easy. And we think that it's a very good idea to, to have it as well for, for our special uh, data, right? And one thing that eventually could be possible if for this way of collaborating, in, in Git, you have what we call a pull request. You do your changes in your, in your local copy. You create your changes, and then you can ask another repo to pull those changes and add them to that repo. If we move that to a geo context, we could have something like OpenStreetMap pull request. That means someone edit changes and then makes a request like, here are my changes. Do you want to pull them from the central repo? So that's the way that uh, development is done in, in Git. And this could be adapted to, to GeoData and particularly to, to, uh, to OpenStreetMap. We have uh, conflict solving. That's one of the parts that actually is a little bit different to it's a little bit different to to Git. It's the idea is the same, but of course it's it's different since we are working with with GeoData. It works similar. Like when you merge branches, there might be conflict if data has been changed differently in in different branches. So actually, it's going to signal a a conflict, and you see that. Well, ba basically, you can do a rebase or a, or a merge, and when you do that, it's going to to find a, find a conflict, but I'm going to go quickly through all that. Uh, the thing here is that for the conflict resolution, uh, if you work with Git, you're working with a source code, there are uh, programs in your operating system that can handle that, show your diffs, and you can manually edit that. That doesn't apply for the kind of data we have, so we need a graphical three-way merge tool, and we have it, and it's based on QGIS, and I will show that at the, at the end. Right? Okay, so that was basically the, uh, the idea, a little bit about Git, uh, quickly about GeoGit, and how does that apply to OpenStreetMap data? Okay, we have, uh, let's say OpenStreetMap data for GeoGit is a very special type of data, because we don't consider any other data in particular in GeoGit, it's just open to any data, but in the case of OpenStreetMap data, we consider this is important, it's an important source of data, so we have some specific stuff. Some of the things that we have is, uh, some of the commands that usually you use for, for GigaGit, they are adapted to OpenStreetMap data. For instance, you have import commands. We have import commands that work as specifically with OpenStreetMap data, and that import data in OpenStreetMap format, right? Then the structure, uh, how that is kept in the repo for OpenStreetMap data, it's a special. I will go, uh, I will stand on that later. It's always a fixed structure, so it's, Let's say that the GeoGit repository knows that that data comes from OpenStreetMap, actually, right? And then we got some commands that are specific and allows us to do some more things with OpenStreetMap data, things that you can do with other data that you put into the, into the GeoGit repo, right? So this is a quick list of the commands that we have. I'm going to go quickly through, through all of them. The import history, this is basically what it does. It takes the history of the OpenStreetMap planet and just for each change set creates one comet basically reproduces the OpenStreetMap planet in a GeoGit repo, right? It's the most basic one that we started. Initially, we used to do that for testing, but it's there. We have import. That means you can import data in OpenStreetMap format. You take your OpenStreetMap data and you put it into a repository. You can not import file, but download using the Overpass API. So you connect to the Overpass API. You just pull the data and use it to create new snapshots, new commit in your, in your um, repo. The map and then map, that means that you have the data, always the OpenStreetMap data in your repo is in a special uh, location. I will show that later. So you can uh, map that, kind of what Imposum does. So you have it with a different schema and it's easier to handle. Right? And then finally, you can export your data because you cannot do things directly on the repo. You have to import the data and then export it. You do your, whatever you want to do in your QGIS or RGIS or whatever you use, and then you re-import back and then GeoGit takes care of the, of the versioning. So that's the export command. And finally, we can create change sets. So the difference 
that, that what I showed before, the difference between two comets or uh, between the working tree and, and the last comet, that difference can be exported in a, a format that is compatible with, with OpenStream out in, in the format of a, of a chain set, actually, right? So then you could take the chain set and actually use it to, to uh, upload it to the OpenStream app planet, right? So how is OpenStream app data in a GeoGit repo? What I said is kind of special in there. It's all stored in two trees. Like when you import any other data, you can tell GeoGit where to put it. Like I put in here, this is the name of the tree, the name of the layer. Not in the case of OpenStream app data. You just have it in two fixed trees that are called way and node, which is store ways and nodes. Then you can do those mappings to change to a different tree and with a different, with a different Ischemia, but all the, the commands that work with the OpenStream map data in your repo assume that your uh, data is in there in way and, and nodes, right? You can put it somewhere else, but then those commands are not going to handle it uh, correctly, right? The correct ways to keep it in, in there as it does, and then do your mappings. Uh, uh, I will show the mappings later. Do those mappings to put in, in some different in some different place, right? Okay, well, this is basically some some of the commands, just an example, what you can, what you can do, you can just import your data, you take a normal uh, file, you just import it, and then you can just, once it's imported, I can use the show commands to see what's in there. In this case, I have this node that was imported, it was imported into the node tree, there's a fixed place where that show, and it shows with basically the, the structure, that is a fixed structure, a fixed schema in the, in the repo, right? So that's basically, I can inspect also way, and you see, Basically, that's what it got. I use the show command to show the content of a given uh, thing in the in the repo, right? So that's basically it, right? Another thing you can do is instead of uh, uh, importing from a file, you can connect to the Overpass API, and you just can uh, download directly. Whether you use a bounding box and it downloads everything, or you can use a more complex uh, filter using the the Overpass query language. So basically, you can create a simple query. Right, like that, and then you just call uh, OSM download with that filter, and it just takes that data and creates a new comment from that. Right, so that that's it. Yeah, and then you see it creates one new comment for that. So when you put your data, it creates a new snapshot, and it keeps on adding things to your to your history, and it keeps track of the last time that you downloaded from the Overpass API. So the next time, it just takes the differences and creates a new comment. Basically, it's dead. And that's the update. You just call download with update, and it basically takes the differences from the, uh, from, with the same filter that you used, and it just uses that same filter to get uh, the content of the planet with that filter, and then creates a new comment with, with that, right? So you see that's how it works. You just call it, downloads things, and then it tells you with, which things have changed or not since the last time that you updated. And by doing that, you can keep track of what's, what's new. And you can do your own development. So that means that you can download your OpenStreetMap data, you do your changes, then you do like a, like a pool in Git, that would be. You just pull data from the OpenStreetMap planet to the Overpass API using that filter. It takes into account your data. It merges that. If there's a conflict, it will see that there's a conflict between the new changes coming from the planet and yours. So that's basically how it works, right? You know. And it can show the difference in this case from uh, one of the uh, from one chain set to another. What you added to to get right. So um, yeah, this is what I've been what I've been saying. Like you, you do that, and then you can do your you, you can do your work, uh, and it, and it will merge with with whatever you have done, and take into account if there are conflicts or whatever. We found some limitation with the with the update, and that's because. Uh, I think that has changed actually, but we haven't done more work on, on this since then. But the overpass API, when you, this has a, a, a tag that you can pass and it just gives you new things since one, one date. So to, you just, GeoGit knows when was the last that time you updated. You can call the overpass API to just retrieve things that have changed since that time, but it doesn't report things that have been deleted. Only those that have been added or modified. So that, that, that was causing a problem for us because we need to know what has been deleted. So what we are doing now is not a very smart thing. We're just downloaded everything and then let GeoGit see what has changed. Okay, so uh, that's the limitation that from our point of view the Overpass API has. I think that someone told me that that, that has changed. I'm not completely sure about that. And now you can get the deleted features 
uh, from the overpass API, but we haven't implemented that, right? So we need to improve that and get the, the same that we get when you get the history, but if you go to the, the history as the history command, you just have the, uh, the full uh, content and you don't have the, the filtering. I'm gonna go a little bit faster now. I think I'm running out of time. So basically the mappings is what allows you to put your data into the repo in a different format, right? So you have, as I say, something similar to, to Impossum. You define a mapping in a JSON uh, file and then it takes your OpenStream map data and puts that into a different tree and with a different structure so it's easy for you to, to use. Then you can export that to a shape file, edit that shape file, you can put it back and then and map, right? So that's basically how it, how it works, right? You export with the mapping. Let me go a little bit faster in here because I'm running out of time and I want to reach the last part. So this would be basically how uh, we would work with um, uh, with your OpenStream app data in, in, in GeoGet. First, you download your data. You, you can take it from the Overpass API or from a file, whatever. You put your data into your, your repo. Then from that data, you can export it using a mapping if you want. So you get a file that you can edit in your GIS software. That's the normal way of doing things in GeoGet. You take things out. You do your edits. You change that. Then you re-import back, right? Then when you import back, uh, GeoGit is going to see what has changed. It's going to be able to compare the version that you exported with the new version that you have just imported. If you have used this mapping, you unmap things, and that will update the canonical representation of the OpenStream map data. That means it's going to update those node and way uh, trees, right? And then you just, with that, those changes, you can create a new comment, create a new version, a new snapshot. And with that new snapshot, then you can, um, you can export it, and you get a change set, and by that you could uh, uh, provide that to update the OpenStreetMap Planet. If there are changes in the OpenStreetMap Planet, you can pull those changes and match with your changes by doing that update. And if there are no conflicts, that will work fine. If there are conflicts, it will not work fine, and you have to solve the conflicts. So basically, similar to the Git uh, way of doing things, which is what we're trying to implement, but with OpenStreetMap data in, in, in this case, right? I'm gonna skip through this now, right? So, uh, in terms of OpenStream map data, what, what do we have to do? As I said, we need to uh, improve that thing with the Overpass API, so it's not a very smart update now, what we do with the update operation. We have some problems with uh, and mapping the, the ways. That's because of the structure of OpenStream map data, which is not the similar that we handled in, in GeoGet. We're not handling relations right now, so uh, we're just using ways and nodes, no relations, so we should do that, and then all the, the, the process for contributing changes back, like you can edit your things, your OpenStream map data in your uh, GeoGit repo, then contribute them back to, to the OpenStream map planet. You can do that, but it's not trivial right now. You have to create that change set, and then uh, it's a little bit tricky. So we're thinking about having an OSM push command. So basically you do whatever in your repo, and then if you've been taking data from, from the, the OpenStream map planet, using that download command, then you should be able to just from GeoGit say, okay, now these are my changes. I have changed my OpenStream map data, send it back to the OpenStream map planet to see if, if I can modify the OpenStream map planet, right? Okay. So uh, what I would like to discuss is one minute that I have is, uh, those are the things that I showed, like how in a normal repo you can put OpenStream map data, but one of the things that we envision is actually having the full planet of OpenStream map in a GeoGit repo and how that would be beneficial. And one of the things that uh, are really good in, in, for that, one of the advantages is that now you have the whole history, like most of the people don't use the history, you just use the la latest version of OpenStream map data, but if you want to use the history of you want, or you want to use something just in, in a given place, like the OpenStream map data with its history for Germany, for instance, that's not trivial. You have to get all the data, you put it into your PostGIS database, you do things, you can do that, but it's not trivial. One of the things that we have in GeoGet is when you clone your repo, right, you have the, the whole repo, you can do two kinds of cloning, which we call shallow cloning and sparse cloning. Shallow means that you can just clone a little bit of the history, like let's say the last year of, of, of history, and sparse means that you can uh, clone just a small part. So if you have the whole OpenStreetMap planet in a GeoGit repo, you could say, okay, give me all the data for Germany in the last 10 months with just one sentence, one command, and you get it. So it's very easy, and that would uh, get rid of the need of people 
creating their own extracts of that because actually it would be good if it does that, right? So that's one of the good things that we, that we see. The last thing in the last minute, I'm going to show you some, some of the uh, interface that we have. We have a QGIS plugin, so that basically what we want to do is have a graphical interface for, for GeoGet. We basically you see the, the history of a repo. It's as if you're used to this similar things for Git. It's kind of similar, like source tree. You get a diff viewer, so you see the differences and geometries are in the data. You get, when you do merge, you can see if you're going to have problems in the merge. If you have problems, they have this conflict resolution thing that tells you where are the conflicts and how to, to solve them. Or you can see the different versions for a, for a, given, for a given feature. Right? Pretty quick thing. We have GeoServer integration, but I think you have no time, so I will probably skip there. And, okay, what's next? Basically, we want to do more work on the OpenStreetMap stuff. Then, uh, I mentioned at the beginning, we're feature complete, more or less. We have all those commands that come from, from the Git uh, philosophy, so we can say that it's feature complete to Git, but still, we have to work on making it more scalable so it can support, like, really large repos and things like that. So the work that we're going to do is not really on adding new functionality, but actually making it work uh, more stably and, and, and better, right? So if you want to get involved, this is uh, uh, basically we, we keep that uh, our website, GeoGit, and, and the repo and everything. So it's, of course, an open source software. It's open for everyone to, to contribute. And I guess that's it. Thanks for attention. Okay, thanks Victor for a great talk. Uh, I think we have a couple of minutes left uh, if there are any questions. Raise your hands please. Uh, so you said um, you, uh, that Overp the Overpass RP does notify you about uh, yeah, deletions. Um, which kind of diffs did you use? The augmented ones or? Uh, sorry, sorry, I couldn't hear that. D did you use the augmented diffs from Overpass API or old, old, old version diffs? I don't understand the question, sir. Okay, so I think the answer is you don't know about the augmented diffs, so. I, no, no. You, you mean when we use for the for the overpass API? Was you say? You, uh, uh, you say yeah, that. you said uh, you you get, don't get notified if a OSM object gets deleted, or it's uh, yeah. Deleted what, what I say is that uh, as far as I know, what we try to do is to get the differences with the overpass API. I was a, I think it's called newer is the tag that you have to pass, and if you pass that, it gives you the newer things from a given date. But that was not reporting the, the things that were deleted. It just gave you the differences in the things that had been added or modified, but not deleted things. And what I said is that someone mentioned uh, to me that that has changed, and now the Overpass API gives that, but I'm not sure about that. That's, that's what I was trying to say. I don't know if that answered the question or not. Okay. Uh, do we have one question left? Yeah, one question. There was someone here. Yes, uh, actually you're right. Uh, it's not possible at the moment in a stable software to, to get the deletions, but it's uh, on the change. It's just, uh, I'll tomorrow talk about the news and the new version, okay. and then you will have a, an, an augmented diff, that's what he refers to, okay. where you can really get the delta of two queries, okay. which is exactly what you need. Yeah, so we okay. should then talk to, to get it into GeoGit. Okay, yeah, great. So it's not in the stable version, right? It's but, not in the stable version. It's, it's just uh, going, way. happening these days to get into the stable version. Okay, okay, yeah. That's great because that, that would definitely make things easier for us and to make a very a smarter update, not just downloading everything, but just the actual changes. Okay, cool. That's, yeah. that's good. So I think the time has passed. We are a couple of seconds behind the time, so I'd like to ask you if you have any questions to Victor to come to Victor after yeah, the sure. talk, please. Okay. okay. Uh, in a couple of minutes, the next talk will be about IMP OSM. So, see you in a couple of minutes.